Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to address how to deal with anger after leaving your abuser. Stay tuned. So I want to just say before we jump into today's material on how to cope with anger after leaving an abuser is that you have every right to feel angry. Anger is one of those emotions that gets a really bad rap. We don't like feeling angry and we don't like angry people. But in reality, there are some situations where anger is an absolutely appropriate emotion to feel. And this is one of them. So if you're watching this video to try to find out if something is wrong with you for how you feel right now, know that there isn't. What you're going through is completely understandable and it makes total sense. A lot of the times when people leave abusive relationships, they feel a very large range of emotions and anger is one of them. I know when I got out of my situation, I went through a period of time where I felt angry almost 24 seven. I was snapping at everybody. I was snapping at my son, at the cashier, at the grocery store. It was really easily triggered and set off. Snap easier, like at my coworkers at work. And I did realize that me acting out on my anger wasn't helpful. So there's a difference between feeling angry and then acting out on your anger. And there are more appropriate ways to act out on anger and then ones that aren't as helpful. So that leads into my first coping tip on how to start to cope with this anger is to identify how you're currently coping with it and what's not working about it. And this is because it's not realistic to say to someone that's been through abuse and has left an abusive relationship to just not be angry. That doesn't work at all. So how are you expressing your anger right now? What is working about it and what isn't working about it? Are you expressing it in a healthy outlet type of way? Or are you snapping on anyone that looks at you funny? The second thing is to really understand where the root of this anger is coming from. So the anger that you're experiencing towards others in your life right now or in your environment really is misdirected anger that is actually aimed at your abuser. And this is really a result of just not processing completely and fully through the events that happened to you. And so all of that anger is deep inside and it wants to come out, but that can be really hard to do. Addressing anger or addressing abuse in general is a really difficult thing. So a few tips for this. First one, which I'm sure you know that I'm gonna say, is to seek therapy. Find a therapist that knows about domestic violence, that knows about narcissistic abuse, that knows their stuff in this area. It can make a huge, huge difference. I will say that a lot of therapists that do specialize in things like domestic violence or narcissistic abuse usually do so for a reason. They usually do have their own history or backstory in this area. And I say that to really, you know, for one, level the playing field a little bit because we've all been through things, even your therapist. And then number two, I let you know this because usually we can have really good insight because of that. We've been in your position or your shoes before and we know what can work and what doesn't work. So working with a therapist, someone that really knows about this stuff can be life changing. The second thing is to journal about this anger. Get out your journal and write about exactly why you're angry. What is the event that's causing your anger? And is your anger in the situation justified? Journaling in general is an excellent way to release and process through emotions. I still journal to this day, and I can't imagine my life without journaling. It was one of the largest keys to my recovery through my entire situation. So I cannot emphasize enough about journaling. My third tip in handling anger is probably going to be one you've heard before, but it is to breathe through it. Taking a deep breath, breathing through anger, doing breathing exercises can be really helpful because it does cause physiological changes in the body. It activates the calming side of our nervous system. And you might need to breathe for longer than a couple seconds. It might need to even be longer than a couple minutes. Sometimes it takes like 15, 20 minutes to really feel the effects of breathing. But if you can hold out that long, I promise that you will feel a difference at the end. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet. I release two new videos every single week. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. It really does help support my channel. And I will see you in the next one.